Hello friends. Today I'm going to recommend to you to read Psalms 37. 37. Psalms Saur 37 in the Holy Bible. Please find it. <clears throat> there are many good golden nuggets, golden wisdom, ancient wisdom from heaven that can improve your life and that can give you eternal life and that can actually make your life more happy right now. Part of what it says is that delight yourself in Yahweh, delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you, grant you the desires of your heart. So our focus when we desire something really, really much. Our focus should anyway be focus on Yahweh, on the God who created heaven and earth. That is the name of the God who spoke to Musa, Musa and Moses in the burning bush. He has a name. His title is God, but his name is Yahweh, or as he showed himself in the newer testament, Yeshua, Jesus. That is the God who spoke to Moses in the burning bush. So if you've never thought about that, you may have uh, a new thought today. You may be enlightened today that God is a title. So Allah is a title while God has a name and that name he revealed to Moses from the burning bush when he sent Moses to liberate the people from slavery and uh, he also reveals his name to you today so that you may be liberated from any slavery that you are in you are no longer a slave you can be a child of God so um, as many as received him, actively received him, as many as believed in his name, believed in the name that Yeshua, Jesus, Isa, is Yahweh, the God who spoke to Moses in the burning bush. As many as received him and believed in his name, to them he gives the authority, the right to become a child of God no longer a slave but a child beloved of god and god is the best father he will take care of us the, okay the sounds you are hearing is from the water in this where i'm sitting and it is a beautiful place i wanted to show you this place as well look at this i mean what better artist than our God? And he who created heaven and earth, the sea and everything that is in them, he created us and he created our hearts, our feelings, our, you know, uh, created our frame so that we can feel, so that we can uh, desire things. This is Yahweh, Yeshua, Jesus. Yeshua means actually Yahweh saves, so he is Yahweh in a bodily form because uh, God is spirit and lives in heaven in a light where no one can come. But he chose to reveal himself for us mortal people through a mortal being who we could relate to and as that mortal person who was both God and man in one because God can because he's God we cannot and we can just be in one place at one time but God is God and he is omnipresent he can be at many places at uh, at the same time and he can be at all places and he can hear your prayers in Indonesia as at the same time as he hears my prayers in Norway, in Colombia, in Saudi Arabia, in Tunisia, in 
Turkmenistan, Kyrgyzstan, Russia, uh, Zambia. Yeah. So he can, and Norway, yeah. He can hear our prayers all the time, everywhere. God is omnipresent. And Jesus actually said before he, after he was crucified, he died, he took the keys of hell, and he came back to life. He took back his life because he can, because he's God, after three days. And before he then ascended to heaven, where he is now, just before that, he said that, uh, uh, do not fear, but go out into all the world and preach this good news to all creation. And those who believe and are baptized, they will be saved. They will have eternal life. And they will be forgiven all of their failures and they will be counted as clean and righteous and perfect in the eyes of God. So on the last day they will not be condemned but they will go straight to paradise, to heaven. Um, and that is the good news. Uh, that is the Injil. So Injil, in case you don't know, or maybe you know, <laughs> Injil is an Arabic word that comes from the Greek Evangelion. And Evangelion means good news. So normally it would be used for uh, if someone, like a servant, came running with good news that a king had conquered a new place or a new city that they won, the good news. Um, and so Injil is actually the good news that Yahweh, our God, has come to the earth, has conquered sin and death, and has killed death for us. And that anyone who trusts him and trusts in the words of Yeshua, Jesus, anyone who trusts that can have this eternal life free of charge. It means that we no longer have to climb up to God to try to be perfect, but that God climbs down to us and he lifts us into heaven. Anyone who insists on trying, no, I will, I will climb up myself by praying five times a day, seven times a day, uh, by giving, by praying, by traveling, by doing this, doing that, doing that, I will be perfect, I will be better, uh, I will reach up to the standard of God. What a blasphemy, because it's pride to think that you, even though you try your best, that you would reach the standard of heaven, the standard of God. If God let you in with even one failure, moral failure, heaven would not be perfect. So what a blasphemy to think that you can enter heaven, enter the standard of God. We cannot. So it is better to give up and say, okay, God, I give up. I admit that I am actually a sinner. I am making failures and mistakes. I do not deserve a place in heaven because I am not perfect. I can never be. But I accept your free gift as you give to me free of charge the eternal life and the perfection. I receive it. I will no longer strive to do it myself. I will admit who I am and I will admit that you are the only one who can take me to heaven. You are the only one who can wash me, who can declare me to be righteous. And the Holy Bible says in Romans 4, 8 or 6, I think, says that blessed, happy, to be envied, guided, relieved and always advancing straight ahead is the person whom the Lord Yahweh will never count his sins against him. So it doesn't mean that we don't have failures and sins, but it means that when we have entered into this other place, that when we have accepted that Jesus is Yahweh and that we belong to him, we become his children and he will not count our many failures against us. He, when he sees us on the last day and today, he sees us through the lens of Jesus and he sees us as righteous. So this is the good news. This is the Injil. And the better things is that it is free of charge. It is given to all. It is not given to <coughs> any people group. It is given to all people. Because you remember 
on the very night when God came from heaven and stooped into the earth as the baby Jesus, the, the heaven was full of angels, full of angels. And they were singing, they were singing. Actually, you know, the angel Gabriel, Hebriel, he came to Mary, to Miriam, and telling her that God is coming to the earth. It will be called the Son of God and uh, God will use you as a vessel to come into the earth and to carry the sins of all his people. He will carry because he's sinless. Uh, there is a book that says that no bearer of burden can bear another man's burden. But Jesus is the only one who had no burden of sin. He had no sin, so he can actually bear our burdens of sins. And Jesus, from his own mouth in John 8, 43, I think. Check it out. It's around there. John, Angel of John, after John, uh, chapter 8, <clears throat> verses around 45. He says that I am from above, you are from below. You are from this world, I am not from this world. And I have told you that if you do not believe that I am he, that I am Yahweh, you will die in your sins. You will surely die in your sins if you do not believe that I am Yahweh, that I am. Because I am is the name of God, Yahweh, Ehye, and it's translated in Greek, Ego, Eimi, but it means Yahweh. So Jesus says, and uh, another place, Jesus also from his own mouth says that I and the Father, we are one. So the one uh, we pray to in heaven, who is God, who created heaven and earth, he says that he is the same. Jesus says, I am, I am the same. I am that God <clears throat> and anyone who believes that will be taken away all the sins and failures and we are seen as righteous and perfect in the eyes of God and that means you have a guaranteed ticket to heaven. It means that you will have his spirit in you so you don't want to do mistakes, you don't want to hate people, you don't want to lie, you don't want to cheat, you don't want to do uh, bad things. You actually want to live holy, set apart, you know that you have been made someone uh, uh, clean and you want to stay clean, you want to act in accordance with what you are. So it is not a license to do failures, it is a license and a help to be holy and to be more and more and more like Jesus, to be made in his image. You know, when God created Adam and Eve in a garden, he created us, mankind, in his own image, to be resembling him, to be like him. But it didn't take long, and we can feel it in ourselves, we are still like that. It didn't take long, and Adam and Eve, they chose to obey their own lust, their own desires, and the voice of Satan, Shaitan, who said, did God really say, you know? And then they saw and they lusted after the fruit and they ate it. So they chose their own way instead of the way of God. Even though God had given them all the trees in the garden except that one, you know? And we are still like that. Uh, but so we were kicked out of the Garden of Eden and we lost our close relationship with God. Something in us died. The spirit that has connection with God, that communicates with God, died that day in us. So we became spiritually dead. So it is not enough to just try to make ourselves better and better. If our spirit is dead, then we need to be revived and it is only God who can raise the dead. So that is what happens when you come back to Jesus and says, yes, Jesus, I believe you. Yahweh, I will be your son and daughter if you will have me, cleanse me, and I will stop uh, saying that I will be accepted in heaven for my own sake. I will only be accepted for your sake. You know, I want your perfection, not mine. 
And when uh, the way to say that, uh, the Holy Bible says that with your heart you believe and you are counted as righteous, uh, justified and, uh, and righteous. And with your mouth, with voice, with your mouth, you proclaim or you declare or you say out loud and by that you are saved, you are rescued. So when we are, um, that is what you got to do. And then afterwards, you'll find someone who is a believer of Jesus who can baptize you in water and you belong to the holy nation, the kingdom of God. You belong to heaven. You are a citizen. You are a child of God, no longer a slave, but a child of God. And God will take care of you. Okay, so those are the good news that I'm sitting here contemplating by the beautiful nature that God has given us. I'm just, as those of you who follow my videos, as you know, I love the sea. I love the sea. I love the ocean. I love being beside the sea. So I'm um, many times sitting like this by the sea just to enjoy the quiet and uh, to speak with God to give him all my cares and worries and uh, to receive his renewed love for me and security and peace and strength and new health. Yeah, so uh, let me pray for you. Father, you know those who are watching. It's not by chance that they're watching this video. You call them, you open this video for them and now they are here. They have heard the good news of the Injil. Lord, I ask that you will receive them. Those who come to you right now, ask that you will receive them as your children. So in the name of Jesus, pray with me, Lord. Pray with me, please. In the name of Jesus, I come to you. I ask, Lord of heaven and earth, can I become your child? I don't want to be a slave. I would love to be your child. I believe that you are God. I believe that you created heaven and earth, that you came down to the earth. I believe that you died on a cross and that you rose again. I believe you paid for my sins and that I am clean because of what you did for me. So Lord, here I come. I want to belong to you, Jesus, God, my Savior. And I ask, Lord, that you fill me with your Holy Spirit so that I can know you more, so that I can follow you, so that I can hear your voice and understand the Holy Bible when I read it. Please put some Christians, some real followers of Jesus in my path so that I can meet someone. Please guide me, Lord. Please take out my heart of stone and give me a heart of soft flesh that can love you, love my neighbors, love everybody, love my enemies and love myself. Lord, I receive your love right now. I receive your cleansing. I receive your new life. Thank you. I am yours from now into the last day and forever. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. So to all of you who prayed that prayer, welcome to the family, to the big global family of God. And uh, now you can know that you have brothers and sisters in all nations of the world. Wherever you go, you will find followers of Jesus and they will receive you and um, let someone uh, baptize you. I would have loved to do it, but I'm far away. So find someone who can baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus and then uh, live with him read every day something from the Holy Bible and I will post also the Jesus movie and you can find it in your language it's in all languages on YouTube online God bless you